uh, good morning. Thank you for coming out. Uh, as Dr. Harris said, I'm Eva Mola. I'm a master's candidate at East Carolina University, and I'm presenting on uh, technology and empire, a comparison of British and Dutch maritime technologies in 1792 to 1815. You'll also refer, hear me refer to this time period as the Napoleonic era. Just a quick introduction. There's two vessels that I'm covering, the Bato and the Brunswick. I'll tell you a little more about them later. They're both located in Simons Bay, South Africa, which is just there. Cape Town's just a little bit to the north. Um, located here is a quick view. This beach right here is Long Beach. There's a railway right around here. The Brunswick is right there, and the Bato is right there. They're really close to shore and easily accessible. Um, I'll give a quick overview of the methodology that we used over the summer and some of the results that came up. This will be coupled with a brief analysis of, of that information, and then finally I'll present a conclusion. Uh, quick history, the Bato is a Dutch 74-gun ship of the line. It was constructed in 1786 in Rotterdam and was originally called the Staten General. It served in European waters until 1802 and took part in the Battle of Camperdown in 1792. It actually led the Dutch retreat away from that battle and salvaged a number of smaller ships along the way. Uh, it was burned 8th of January 1806 when the British took the Cape for the second and final time. Um, in 1802, it took the new Governor General Janssens to the Cape of Good Hope when, that, when the Dutch colony there had been returned to Dutch hands after the Treaty of Amiens in that year. Uh, from that point on, it attempted a voyage to Batavia as part of the East India Squadron, but was damaged and had to make port in Mauritius and, and repair its, uh, its rudder assembly. It then returned to South African waters and served there until its destruction. It surveyed the, uh, while there, it surveyed the coastline looking for likely landing spots for an invasion or further settlement, and finally served as a floating gun battery in Simons Bay to deter any attack there. The Brunswick is a 1,200-ton Brit British East Indiaman that was constructed in 1792 at Blackwall Yards. Uh, it was wrecked during its sixth and final voyage. Uh, at this point, it was considered to be quite elderly voyage, as the British, uh, as most East Indiaman, only survived about five or six voyages. Uh, most of its time was spent traveling to India and China and then back to London. Uh, it depart it was, had a delayed departure from India on its final voyage uh, due to storm damage. We're not quite sure what the extent of that damage was, uh, but it was captured off of Ceylon by Admiral Lin Wa in the Marengo and the Bell Pool on the 11th of July, 1805. It then arrived at Simons Bay at either the 3rd of September or the 12th of September, depending on which, if you're using the French or British calendar at the time. Uh, and it was wrecked on either the 18th of September or the 6th of September, depending on which calendar you're using. The image here uh, depicts both ships. Uh, on the right is the Brunswick right after it's washed up onto shore. On the left background right there is the Bato. The two French ships right here are likely the Marengo and the Belt Pool, which were part of uh, Admiral Linsois' squadron while he was uh, raiding throughout the, East, the, or the Indian Ocean. Quick meet on site descriptions. The sites are very similar. They're both very shallow. The Bato is only in four meters of water. The Brunswick is in six meters of water. They're both within 200 meters of each other, while the Bato is a little closer to shore. Uh, the Bato is subject to heavy surf conditions. We did get tossed around quite a bit when we were there. Uh, the Brunswick has some lighter surge, but it's still something that you need to contend with. Um, the average visibility on both sites is three to four meters. You've got a concreted center mass on Bato while the uh, Brunswick, Brunswick debris field is much more spread out and is considered of several hull fragments. The outer edge on Bato has some burnt wood and has some copper sheeting and bolt remains. Uh, it's surrounded by sand and the remains are completely overgrown. On Brunswick, there's wooden remains with copper bolts and some sheeting and iron nails. It is also surrounded by sand and completely overgrown. Uh, on the left here is a mud map that we created during our investigation of the Bato, there's the concreted center mass. There's an anchor located in the slight bulge over there with some ballast piles there as well. There's also another one towards the northern edge of the wreck. This is a multi-beam image taken in 2012 under Jake Harding's work of the Brunswick. There's a primary hull section right here with a couple of secondary hull sections just there. There's some iron knees and loose blanking spread throughout that you can just make out in that image as well. Uh, just a quick overview of the methodology. The ones in red are the ones I'm going to be focusing on during this presentation. Uh, as I mentioned, we completed some mud maps and some labeling. Uh, we then took detailed scantling measurements and iron knee measurements. We took some anchor measurements of the anchor right here. Unfortunately, upon closer examination, the anchor was revealed to be far too small to serve either anything on the Brunswick or the Bato. So it may be related to later ship activity 
more salvage work on the rack. Uh, we took some targeted wood sampling that I'll talk a little bit more about later. There was artifact research undertaken at the Ezekiel Maritime Center. However, the comparative analysis of the bolts that were there revealed no difference at all between the construction of the vessels. We took some cannon measurements. There's two cannons reportedly taken from Bato on Simonstown Jetty. However, with no comparison to the, Briti uh, to the British East Indiamen, there's no real need to analyze those in this presentation. Obviously, we took some photographs and videos throughout the presentation, which you'll see here. Uh, scantling measurements. We took detailed scantling measurements on the Bato. However, inclement weather prevented us from doing the same on Brunswick. However, uh, in 1995, a, a project Sandalwood on Brunswick did take some average scantling measurements, which we then used for our comparison. The one measurement that we were able to take from Brunswick is the space between the frames, which was revealed to be about two centimeters. All of those measurements up there are in metric centimeters. Um, and the analysis of this reveals that there are significant <coughs> differences in frame dimensions. You can see that the Bato and Brunswick frames differ by about 20 centimeters in the molded dimension and about 10 centimeters in the sided dimension. The space is also quite significant as the Bato's frames seem to be about four times farther apart than the Brunswick ones. In hull planking, the Brunswick's planks uh, or the outer hull planking is 10 centimeters, well, which is twice that thickness of Bato. Uh, the width on both planks is nearly identical, however. And what this means is that the British had a structural advantage in the ships. It meant they had sturdier ships that could last longer and go further afield. However, fire damage on Bato is likely to have skewed the results. When looking at the frames, you can see on the left here, you can see that they're all warped and molded down, worn out, so that the measurements might not be as accurate as we would like. Unfortunately, those are the only measurements we could take because we weren't able to dig through the concretion that was further in. On the right here is some of the remains of the Kielsen from Brunswick. Uh, iron knee measurements were only taken on Brunswick because that's the only one we found iron knees on. Uh, all segments were measurement, measured, so we took measurements of the two arms here and then the width of each arm. In this case, there's actually a smaller appendage that sticks out right there, and that was all, all measured as well. There was three types of iron knees that were discovered. You have hanging knees that are serve the same purpose as wooden ones, lodging knees, which are similar but slightly lighter in support, some, some of the smaller beams, and then T-shaped knees, which I'm trying to figure out exactly where those that would go in the wreck. They serve a similar purpose to hanging knees, but they have a more specialized purpose. Now, the analysis of this is that it reveals a clear industrial advantage to British ships. They have less weight or sorry, they have added strength for less weight and less maintenance as a result. We took targeted wood sampling of diagnostic timbers. This involved ceiling planking, hull planking, frames, and keelsons on both wrecks. All of Bato's samples came back as being constructed of European oak, and all except one on Brunswick was oak as well. The only part that wasn't is the silver fur that you see right here. It is connects to the keelson right here and is a possible repair. However, there's no historical uh, evidence to suggest that this is actually the damage that it suffered, so we're trying to figure out why they would use silver fir, which is a softwood. Does this indicate a lack of steady oak supplies, or is it simply ne necessary due, due to the nature of the repair? Um, in, two, in the early 2000s, Duncan Miller, a student at the University of Cape Town, completed a work of metallurgy on both samples of copper from Bato and Brunswick. As you can see here, the Bato's copper was 3% tin and had no lead in it. Brunswick was 5.5% tin and 1% lead. Now, this reveals that there's slightly purer copper in the Dutch ship. However, historical sources give no source of complaint of either one, so they seem to have worked just as well. So this gives, gives each side a very effective copper sheeting. On the right here, at the top, this is a roll of copper sheeting found on Brunswick. We doctored the image slightly to make it a little clearer. On the right here is an image of the recovered Brunswick rudder that you'll hear a little bit more about in the next presentation, but you see evidence of copper sheeting along here and here. And this is actually the rudder that they took the copper sample for from the study. Now, in conclusion, I'm trying to tie this all together by using archaeology in the wider historical and imperialistic framework of the time. Most of the elements we looked at were a little too similar to give a clear advantage. However, the presence of iron knees does give a British technological superiority. They have lower maintenance. They have less reliance on already dwindling oak supplies in Europe and abroad. 
and allows for, as a result, this allows for extended patrols and far-flung operations. This is further evidenced by the fact that they were able to operate in the Cape of Good Hope when they took that in 1806. They had further operations in 1806 in Brazil, and they later completed conquests in, in the East Indies as well when they took Java in 1812. British ship structure is also superior. They have closer frames and thicker planking, which gives sturdier and tougher built ships that will, again, allow for further operations and give them a technological advantage that they, of course, applied in their imperialistic ideals. The only advantage the Batavian Republic has, or the Dutch, or the Dutch have in this case, is that their copper is slightly pure and that they can rely on oak supplies in both the Baltic and deeper in Germany that they can access through the Rhine that flows through both Holland and then finally into Germany. Now, this does give them advantage in that they can keep building ships and they can maintain a, a semblance of naval superiority in certain areas. Uh, however, the lack of techno technological advancement does mean that they lack behind the greater powers of the time. Uh, and then. Finally, I'd just like to acknowledge a debt of gratitude to the South African Heritage Resource Association, or SARA, the Zico Maritime Center, which was where I completed the artifact analysis, Pisces Divers Cape Town, East Carolina's Program in Maritime Studies, team members Nathaniel King, Justin Edwards, and James Smales, and then finally Dr. Lynn Harris, thesis supervisor. Thank you very much.